Welcome back to Quick Take Charge. I'm Tim Stenevec. And I'm Jennifer Zabasanja in New York. Before COVID-19 vaccines were even approved for emergency use authorizations, countries were lining up deals to make sure they had enough doses for their own population. But now, months later, unused vaccines are piling up across the U.S. And the world's wealthiest countries hold 40% of the world's vaccinations, although they only represent 11% of the global population. Well, joining us now to discuss this and discuss how they're fighting the uneven vaccine distribution is Tom Hart. He is the acting CEO of One, a global movement campaigning to end extreme poverty and preventable diseases by 2030. Tom, thanks so much for joining us here. So one of the top priorities for you guys is, uh, talk to us about the top priorities for the ACT Accelerator program. Yeah, the, so our top priority is to urge wealthy nations that have secured more doses than they need to inoculate 100% of their population uh, and share those surplus doses with poor countries that are having a very difficult time securing any doses at all. Um, right now, the United States, for example, has secured a half a billion more doses than we need to vaccinate every man, woman, and child in the country. Now, that they aren't stockpiled now, but we have secured and legally binding agreements um, for that surplus. We are urging the Biden team to make a plan to share those extra doses with poor and developing countries who can't access doses um, as quickly as possible. We're in a race against this virus. Every month, every day that goes by, we can measure in lost lives and livelihoods, but, but for our own, we are also racing against the mutations. And the longer this thing goes on anywhere, including outside our borders, the more risk we are to being subject to more variants. Yeah, it's something yep. that the, the, the Prime Minister of Jamaica spoke to me about uh, a few months ago. He did accuse wealthier nations of, of hoarding vaccine doses. Uh, and his country uh, is part of the COVAX program, uh, the global program that does aim to get vaccines to uh, developing countries around the world. Look, urging developed economies to actually uh, get these vaccines to developing economies is one thing. But how do they actually get it done? How do they actually do it? How do you do it? Yeah. So there is something that you mentioned earlier, the ACT Accelerator is an international consortium of, of institutions and philanthropies and others that the United States and many other countries support. And they came together early in the pandemic to pool resources and to develop a strategy to get vaccines, diagnostics, therapeutics, and other assistance to the half of the planet that uh, might get left behind in this pandemic. They set a goal of raising $38 billion to fund this effort. Um, and they've raised a re slightly more than half of that um, a, a year later. So it's really urgent that uh, we step up. Now, the Biden administration and many other governments have stepped up strongly in support of the ACT Accelerator, um, but there's much, much more to do very, very urgently. Um, the other thing that we can do, as I mentioned, is to share those doses. Look, I don't blame rich countries from hedging their bets a year ago when they, when we didn't know what vaccines would make it through the race or how quickly. But now we have uh, many vaccines on the market being deployed rapidly. Production is scaled up very, very quickly. And that hedging, which we did earlier, now is looking a lot more like hoarding. And Tom, you mentioned the Biden administration. Um, and I saw there was a tweet that came out and you said, that the framework that the Biden administration put out is a signal that America is back. Is there anyone specifically in the White House that you have been working with? Well, the entire Biden team has really stated very clearly uh, that they want to be engaged in the multilateral and global effort to end this pandemic. The president himself has said, once we have clearly um, secured enough vaccines for everyone in the United States, he will seek to find ways to share those extra doses. We are urging him to act on that quickly and make those plans. And it's and it's it's interesting. The logistics matter here. It depends what language you put on the labels of these vaccines, whether it's English or uh, or Swahili. It matters where you ship them. Mm. Those sorts of logistical delays could take weeks or months, and you can measure that in lives and livelihoods and potentially variants. So we're really urging all wealthy countries that have secured more doses to make those plans now. Um, we have what? found a really receptive audience with the Biden team on a whole host of issues and are, are 
urgently awaiting their views on dose sharing. What other governments have you been in touch with specifically? Who have you spoken to? Sure. The One Campaign works in Canada, the UK, France, Germany, uh, and, and a new number of countries in Africa as well. So we've spoken to all of these gov governments to encourage them to share surplus doses if they have them. We've encouraged them to support the ACT Accelerator so that that fund the can help uh, with other countries um, and to have a global response to this global pandemic. And Tom, I mean, we mentioned in the intro, one has worked to um, eliminate some of the preventable diseases around the country for, or around the world for years. I wonder um, what are some of the challenges that still exist in the work that you are doing in order to end some of these global pandemics and, and diseases that we see around the world? Oh, the, the COVID pandemic has set back efforts on global health across the board. It's been devastating. Just one example is, the Global Fund to Fight AIDS to be Malaria estimates a half a million more people died of HIV as a result of COVID. So, I mean, you can just imagine the stress on these very um, resource poor health systems in poor countries. Uh, it really um, has strained them to be able to maintain programs for HIV, TB, malaria, routine childhood vaccination. So it's, it's not only been a crisis um, on the direct health uh, vulnerabilities with the pandemic, but it's knock on effects on other health programs and indeed other economic, uh, other economic issues have been really, really difficult. How much has it set back what you have been trying to do for years at one? Like give us some data here. Oh, we've, we've lost probably several decades of progress wow. against, uh, against extreme poverty. Now the question is resilience. The United States, other wealthy, rich countries have also been set back. This has been a deep economic recession. But the resilience that we have, we are already beginning to see the rebound. The, the difficulty is in poor countries, say, for example, across Africa, don't have the sort of resilience or, and the ability to bounce back as quickly. So it's really urgent that we not only deal with the health impacts of the pandemic, but we support and partner with poorer countries to help them bounce back economically as well. And Tom, what can everyday people do? I mean, I think they, they read these headlines uh, and they want to sort of figure out a solution to this. What are some things that people can do to help the work that you and your team have been doing? So people can certainly um, open their checkbooks and support efforts like the Global Fund and Gavi. There are mechanisms to contribute directly to them from the public. You can join the One Campaign at one.org and become an advocate. Um, and talk to governments, as I mentioned before, we work with the Biden administration and, and major governments across the world so that they are doing the right thing to address the pandemic. Um, and of course, we always encourage people to act locally as well. Um, this is truly a global effort um, and it's important to stop the pandemic here at home as well as it is everywhere around the world. Absolutely, acting CEO of One, Tom Hart, thanks so much for your time and for the work that you're doing. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.